Hello everyone and welcome back to Assembly Winter 2016. I'm sorry about the delay, we just had a few issues just getting hold of the players. But we're all sorted now, we're back. I hope you enjoyed the music that myself and Lorinda put together for you. Seemed like everyone was, uh, you know, being okay about it, they enjoyed it. Schooling them in some cancer music. Yeah, I don't know how these kids today live when they don't understand their cancer music properly, so... <laughs> a lesson or two. Okay. Uh, looking forward to this next match though, Blackout and Techno Goose. Yeah, it's going to be really good. So Blackout, obviously, from Team Dignitas. Uh, one of the uh, most well-known UK players. And uh, and Techno Goose, I don't know too much about him, to be honest. Uh, you've you said you've looked into some of these guys in a bit more detail. Yeah, he literally signed for um, Carnage Esports, like, yesterday. Um, oh, really? That nin he's... ninja pickup before the tournament began. Yeah, ninja pickup, right. And they've now got two players in the tournament. The other one is that guy who apparently is one of his friends anyway, and so it was a pickup that was going to happen. Um, it was just good timing that they picked him up before this tournament. He beat Wampy 3-0 in the first match as well, oh, okay. which not is too a shabby. decent result. Yeah, not too shabby not at all. Yeah, so... So, going on to the decks, Blackout has Warrior, Mage, Rogue, and Druid, and Techno Goose has Warlock, Mage, Paladin, Shaman. So, so far we've seen a lot of Mage, and Paladin seems like a pretty steady pick as well. Um, and the bans, Techno Goose has actually banned Blackout's Druid, which is interesting and I think suggests mm -hmm. that his Mage may be Freeze Mage, because you just wouldn't ban Druid if you can just destroy it with uh, Tempo Mage. Um, and Blackout's ban is actually aimed at Shaman, so um, he doesn't want, you know, obviously the, to play against what I imagine to be the aggro Shaman list. Yeah, and interesting that Blackout has bought Rogue. I've, I've heard Blackout more than once before big tournaments say that he thinks Rogue is underrated. And he's going with that line again today, saying you know, he's brought the rogue, he's put it in the lineup, he's put his money where his mouth is this time, and all those other cliches. So let's see if he actually gets the win with the rogue when it comes up. Um, yeah, Blackout's actually played rogue since rogue was a thing. Like, I remember the early days when there used to be some tournaments around Manchester that I first met Blackout at, and um, he, just, he just played rogue. Like, if there was tournaments with single deck format, or if there's tournaments with, you know, best of five, best of three, doesn't matter. He would just play one Miracle Rogue is a really good deck, of course. Yeah. Um, but also, like, he just loves that deck. And if there's any way it can work, then he will almost certainly play it. So we're just going into the game now. Let's just just getting spectator. Yeah. There we go. And bear with me, guys. I have to change the names on the game screens for this sick production value. So uh, give us two seconds. So Blackout's got Warrior and Techno Goose has got his Warlock. Blackout is playing Patron pretty much the warrior of choice at the moment and his hand looks pretty decent he's got the war axe he's got the patron he's got an acolyte he's got an inner rage so he can do pretty much what he wants with this and the warlock has a faceless in it so it's almost certainly a combo reno and it's got a reno in it so that makes it a bit easier to predict as well yeah um, the, so uh... it's a combo lock versus patron uh, what do you think of this matchup i know that like people seem to think that the warlock is favoured, but I'm not sure. I think it's I think it is favoured, but I think it's a lot closer than it gets credit for. Yeah, I think um I think it is favoured. A lot of it, especially when you look at stuff like who's in the deck and everything, and he already has Hellfire. Yeah. So you're already th this is why it's favoured. If the warlock can draw the AOE, and because to a certain extent, the combo aspect, although is dangerous to to Blackout's warrior, isn't really the win condition here for Techno Goose. I don't believe. I think it's more of I will just clear your patrons, and yeah. then you have to kill me some other way. And depending on what patron list Blackout's actually running, um, he might not actually be, you know, have some of the cards like, you know, there's a variant with, like we spoke about earlier with Corcoran mm -hmm. Elites. Um, you know, they, you know, can put, put quite a lot of pressure on actually if you can chain them and stuff like that. So, um, you know, he might not play a variant that she can uh, smash a lot of pressure on. Whereas Techno Goose, the good thing here is he has his Hellfire, he has his Ooze to destroy the weapon. And yeah. um, he also, like, has, like, parts Reno. of the combo. <laughs> he's, he's got Boom, he's got Reno, so he can put the board down. And one of the ways that Warlock, uh, that Warrior can win this match is if he gets a Finley down and draws, like, just keeps up. Um, but there's no Finley here yet, there's no Corcoran Elite. And if he's going to be able to make a load of patrons, he'll have to keep some back because he'll be aware of the threat of the Hellfire. And there's also stuff like... Um, there's just other board clears... Twisting Nether, that sort of thing in this deck. Yeah. So Blackout's all... going to have to sort of feel the way. He'll probably make four patrons next turn. Yeah, it's a tough one as well, because you always just fear the AoE, 
but if you always play around AoE, then you ain't ever playing any cards, right? You know, that's the problem. He looks like he's going for the coin boom, though. I kind of like this play. He doesn't get insta shut down, and he doesn't particularly have to use the weapon this turn, so he can hold that off and see what happens with the Twilight Drake. And what, what the Warlock actually chooses to do, but what's a little bit ropey for Blackout is not a lot of people are actually playing the combo variant. So Blackout might feel safe at around, you know, 20-ish health or whatever. Yes. And if Technogoose can get a Emperor down, then yeah, a lot of bursts can come out of nowhere. And already, look, there's the other ring, Farseer, whipping back up to 26. Big game on there. So and now, at least now, with the Patron turn, he can clear some of the board. And that's sort of going to, you know, at least be a yeah. bit more valuable than just the dropping Patrons on an empty board. The problem is he's into this, like... He showed us last turn that he didn't really want to go for the patrons yet. Like he's, he's thinking about it now, but with Techno Goose's board getting stronger and stronger, it's forcing Blackout's hand, and he's he's going to have to go for it at least sometime soon. Presumably, he's thinking about clearing with Grom here. Yeah, I think the benefit uh, of doing this now is that he gets more value out of the weapon uh, instead mm -hmm. of just like just hitting the Drake. It just feels terrible. And then just hitting phase feels terrible when you're almost certain it's against a Reno deck. Um, That's a good shot for him, at least. Yeah, um, so now he, I guess he just... Oh, he has access to execute, right? So I kind of still... Oh, it's really tough. Both minions that he could leave up, so the Tharp Farsi, if he chooses to play the Armorsmith, um, kill off a, a patron anyway. So, it, yeah, I like the execute play. Yeah, he's choosing to protect his life total a little bit as well. So, yeah, that's interesting there. Um, he's trying to stay on a high life, so he, he must have got wind of the first match. He probably knows there's a combo in there. Like we said earlier, in these tournaments where all 16 players are in the same part of the same room, word gets around really quickly what people are playing. So there's yeah. a good chance he knows exactly what he's up against here. Yeah, and we'll see uh, if he may, if you know if he utilises the Armorsmith Whirlwind, maybe. Um, it seems kind of... I mean, do, so does Technogus need to draw a card? That's the first question, right? Because Hellfire just seems like such the obvious choice that you've I, used yeah. Mortal Coil to cycle over a card that um, over just clearing them regardless and just saving. Because the Warlock's got tap, but as we can see, especially for a, a combo Warlock deck like this, drawing cards is super important. And we did see him now just pick up the Alex Straza. So he can actually just play Alex Straza next turn, hope he doesn't die, and then kill him. Because there's just no... Uh, has he got... Oh, actually, he doesn't have the Thorison, right? So he's not reduced him down. He does have the Leroy and the Faceless. So he, But that's only 12. That's a little bit uh, I mean, he can buy as much time as he wants with Reno. Um, he's not under massive pressure, but he doesn't have much in the way of actual removal, which is really unusual for this deck, um, other than the Twisting Nether, which obviously you wouldn't do here. So... Yeah, Blackout's is... got to find a way to generate pressure here, and he could do it here. Yeah, this seems really nice, though, for Tenno Goose, because what he's doing is he's putting threats on the board that make it awkward for Blackout to actually claim in a nice way uh, and mm -hmm. say, sort of save the frothing. I guess he's just going to... Um, hmm, what can he do here? Because he can't actually clear off the taunt, can I mean, he? He, he can in a rage and... He oh, he's going to whirlwind well in a rage. He's going now. to hit for a lot of damage. Is it even lethal? It's really I close. Don't, yeah, I don't think he's actually going to hit, though, right? Because the worry here is he just 15, he gains 16. the extra damage, but he kills the Dread Corsair. Oh my God, he, imagine a taunt 16, out of the Shredder. 15 or 16. He won't Maybe he's just going to do that and, and hope that Grom can win next turn. Yeah. I'm not saying that's the right play well, or the wrong play. Yeah, well, the, the, the problem is he doesn't have a prop for Grom if he makes this play. He, and, he won't need it. He'll, he'll be doing like 16 now. Yeah. He's also against Reno Luck. That's the scary thing. So if Reno yeah, comes I, down, I think you, you just, just take the view that it doesn't get any better from here on in. So you do it now and you just go, He's if he doesn't it. have any of his things, I will now win the game. If he does have his things, it, well, if he doesn't have them, it will get better for me. What's pretty interesting actually is there's, he can Reno... But he's got nothing else to kill off both of these exactly, minions, right? right? So he renos and takes 15. I mean, let's be honest, it's still the safest option. See what comes out of the Shredder. Um, and he's got to take, well, that's 17 now. And it, But he has to reno, right? There's no there's no way out here. Yeah, he should have tapped first, though, I think. Next turn. Um, oh, yeah, Argus, right? He has Argus, that's uh, right. Okay. 
Yeah, so Argus is good, and that's probably just sealed the game. I imagine Blackout might even concede. Um, yeah, yeah he, there we go. Yeah. He just needed to um, make sure. Like that, that last play from Blackout was really quality, in my opinion, because it just gave him a chance of winning the game with a matchup that was going. You could see it was going the wrong way. You can see when your opponent's feeling with their hand like that that. You know, he'll, he'll have read the Reno was in the hand there. Yeah, and it's definitely rough. And that's why um, that style of Warlock deck, not so much the combo aspect, but Warlock in general in terms of the control over the Zoo style, uh, is so deadly versus Patron. It's, you clear the board once, and the fact that you have heal, you just run out of juice, and that's just it. And, and the Warlock can just tap, as we saw, and draw so many cards, it just doesn't matter. So we're going to see Blackout rock his Patron Warrior again, and Techno yeah. Goose has gone into... Now that I can confirm his secret paladin. Uh, wasn't 100% sure because we only saw creepers and a divine favor, so it still could be aggro. Um, yeah. But now we can see there is secret paladin. And the trick here um, is Blackout needs to get patrons on the board before Techno Goose gets Mysterious Challenger on the board. So he already has the patron, and now he definitely wants to pull Inner Rage and the Death Spite, or at least Death Spite. Um, mm -hmm. b before turn 6 and have that turn 5 patron set up. There's in a rage. So this is looking pretty nice for Blackout already. Yeah, and even forgetting the patron bit, he's just got nice uh, minions for this. He's got the frothing, he's got the acolyte, he's got the corsair, he's got the armorsmith. And all of those things help you to keep the board. So you can win this game by attrition as patron. You can sit there and you just sort of ping away. He's not going to have to because he's got the patron. But you can just slowly run the paladin out of stuff and because you're a warrior you don't take quite enough damage for even a late game Tyrion doesn't always seal the deal for the paladin yeah the, uh, the way this match um is like most of the time decided is that turn five six maybe even turn seven um mm -hmm. because if the paladin as always like has the board and the warrior can't deal with that mysterious challenger turn um, it's going to be very rough. But the warrior has access to cards like Execute and things like that, which can just, you know, it can be avenged all you want. As long as you can damage it once, then the Execute just removes it straight off the board. A second Fire War Axe is reasonable, but he would have much preferred a Death Bite this turn to really yes. um, really put the pressure on. We might actually see Ghoul, because if he drops Ghoul now, <laughs> then, like, on, just on, on the board on its own... Then Techno Goose is like, I don't really want a true silver he's just a ghoul, but frothing, it, you kind right? of have to, right? He's thinking about whether to frothing or dreadful sail as well. Because um, if he could frothing there and then play the ghoul, um, the frothing would the frothing would have actually started doing enough damage to sort of make the paladin go on the defensive. But he's he's just gone for the sensible play. And and that's baited out the second charge, which is really good for him now. Uh, he can start building the board depending how he wants. He's got the death spite. But I'll be interested to see if he just doesn't use this other charge of the weapon, or whether he does. Yeah, it's gonna be a. Uh... Oh, he's he... yeah. I think he kind of has to, right? Just attacking. Yeah, I think so. He, he, he had the option to equip death spite and do some really terrible looking trades, but um, <laughs> he he's had in the option no to hurry. do some dodgy, dodgy trades. <laughs> Um, it's mysterious, dodgy trading. Mysterious Challenger does come down. He said that's some mis. Yeah, he's hey. going to buff the Frothing Berserker by one more than he needed to, that's all. Ah, uh, because of the extra damage from the ghoul. Okay. Yeah. So, not nothing major, I guess. And the Frothing Berserker's not getting any uh, decent attacks in any way, unless, like, the Warrior would have to, like, Whirlwind, Weapon, Execute to, like, make the Frothing hit face here. And that seems like quite the, uh, quite the demand uh, of the Warrior. One thing that Blackout's doing here that he points out himself that he does when he's under pressure, he's starting to play faster and faster. I think he's making himself slow down here. Yeah, Blackout is actually, before. again, from my experience playing him, I've played Blackout quite a lot, and Blackout is um, it is very, it's normally very fast, and actually he, he can be a bit frustrated if his opponents play really slow because mm -hmm. he likes to just play. You know, like he's like the far opposite end of life coach, you know, I guess. Yeah. This is so good. The execute draw from Battle Rage was massive. Like we said earlier, you either get your patrons out turn five, so then the paladin just, well, a challenger just doesn't matter because you have four patrons, or they play the challenger and you just remove it <laughs> because you Yeah, it execute. was really, I mean, he didn't, that wasn't by chance. Well, it was by chance, but he planned that turn in advance. He, he chose right at the start of that turn to get the Battle Rage played so he could plan out the turn properly. Um knowing that he probably needed a little bit more than he had in hand already. So that was that was nice play. Techno's just continuing to play on curve like Secret Oof. Paladin does. 
Oh. Uh, that's pretty major. Yeah, I mean, this just feels like game, because all Black Ops needs to do is Grim Patron in a rage. He gets the Berserker buff to a reasonable amount. He doesn't need to be risky and attack in and then go for the Berserker, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think you attack first, because a bomb is quite likely to kill it, because it's only on two health. Uh, so, yeah. He, yeah, he's taking the 12 damage. Um, and then he's just going to hit face for another four, execute the second execute already. Um, Black Elf's not even drawn half his deck, and he's got both executes exactly when he's needed them. This is uh, this is how you want the game to go if you're the page and play on this side of the board. Yeah, and also, the Paladin, just even if he does somehow get out of this, I can't even think what it would be. Well, like, even Tyrion doesn't do anything but, now. Yeah, because Tyrion, he can use like, of like the this. three patrons to kill it, and that is a very very quick game too and that's and pretty a, much the the schooling on how you beat secret paladin with patron warrior that was beautiful um the play There's something about divine favor to point out there when everyone's saying it's broken and it probably is a really powerful card especially in aggro pally but in secret paladin where your hand size doesn't completely empty he's lost that game with like eight cards in hand because he had to divine favor early yeah and that think... divine favor had just been a Hearthstone card. Yeah, and I think I think one of the things as well is like Divine Favors. It's a card I like, but it's very much a card that um, is is one way or the other, right? You know, you're either going to get quite a lot of value, or it's probably dead, and that's the risk you take with that kind of card. Um, in the aggro matchups, it's probably going to do nothing and be dead in your hand. But in the control matchups, it can potentially win you the game by drawing so many cards that you don't normally draw. And we see now Techno Goose has gone into his mage, where Blackout has uh, you know, flipped onto his rogue for this match. And as we said earlier, based off that uh, off the Druid ban from Techno Goose against Blackout, we presumed this mage was Freeze Mage, and that's what it looks like now. Yeah, so interesting to see why Blackout hasn't got gold coin here, by the way. Um, so he's going to get the news now what it is. Like we said earlier, he probably knows what it is already, otherwise he may not have made that play. And he's just going to try and get the beats down as quickly as possible. But Yeah, there's the um, Doomsayer. Um, Techno Goose's hand actually... looking pretty tidy oh, yeah. at this point. Oh, not worth. Not worth. Not worth. Safe for later. Um, yeah, Techno Goose's hand's looking pretty good. Like he's got the draw, he's got the secret fetch, he's got the card damage reducer, and he will start drawing into the things that help him control the game shortly, you would imagine. As there's not much else left in his deck. Yeah, so. um, the positive thing here is Blackout has the Lotheb, which mm -hmm. is pretty much, you know, I will almost make you skip your turn card against Freeze Mage. Yes. As, as, as the longer the game goes on anyway, it becomes even more so. And having it already in hand... On, on a very base level feels bad because it's like, oh, I have a five drop on turn three. But this is the one card you definitely just want sat in your hand and then you play it whenever you think you can get the most value. And he's just just built a board just like that with the teacher. Um, coin sap, gets himself in front and you know can at least commence a beating or try to. Yeah, and a good uh, thing to note here is... going to scramble to establish things here. Yeah, a good thing to note as well, he built the board up on the mage's turn five. So there's no easy, nice way... To, to deal with it. There's Frost Nova Doomsayer oh. would have been the best, but that only kills two one ones and the teacher, and then you have follow up. So um, any thoughts on the tech on Techno Goose actually going face there with the loot order rather than choosing to draw a card and remove a one one? Uh, it's a tough one. Um, he's very much reliant on the card draw now. I think he just he's just hoping he can draw into some AOE or at least a freeze mm -hmm. because, I mean, Thorison's fantastic, but. Not when you're just rocking two ice lances and a fireball. You normally want much more value from that. Yeah, sure. And I was just thinking that two points to face just doesn't do much, where you can actually remove a 1-1 one, one there and draw the card as well. Yeah, it seemed Acolytes, like maybe you think you could have done. Acolyte's a pretty good pickup, but because the teacher's down, he, he almost has to just ping it. So he pings for the instant yeah. draw, gets at least two cards from this, so this is pretty reasonable. And there's Flame, One's a flame Strike. Strike. Wow. Which okay. is it's not going to clear point. off the, um, the teacher next turn. Um, unfortunately right for Techno Goose. Oh, and he uses... And, oh, he, oh, he's going to heal does, it. Yes, fine. Is he healing it back up? Yeah, okay, he'll heal Bla it back up. Blackout with the flashy one, plays. Alex Straza, but yeah. Blackout with getting the flashy opponents, plays. <laughs> getting his opponent's hopes up there, and... Still, this is a pretty reasonable... He's still on 34, though. Yeah, this Blackout's is a pretty reasonable spot. Flame Strike, though, right? Because, um, like, the Flame Strike does, doesn't kill the teacher off. 
but it just clears a lot of pressure off the board, and he's still on full health. I was just going to actually say that he might not even feel pressured into a flame strike because he's so safe at the moment, and suddenly he's got the, the fireball, the two ice lances for free, and more importantly, the arcane intellect, which normally you want an arcane intellect um, before an emperor because the arcane intellect is what you use to cycle into your better cards. Mm -hmm. uh, but getting it for two mana at this point on that turn felt a bit nicer. But Blackout's now just stacking everything and saying, I'm going to kill you next turn. Um, yeah. He's going to... Oh, he's clearing off the Thorison. So he's not going to go full full face, which would be a, maybe a little bit too risky. Um, but he's definitely putting a lot of pressure on. And with Lothem now on the board, that's a lot of damage for next turn. And as we said, um, this is normally the turn where you say, what are you going to do, mage? But the Thorison and the Alex are on to turn eight is huge. Because now yeah. Blackout's a bit like... Uh, <laughs> does he have it? He has. He has it, right? He has two. He has a million damage in hand, right? He does. Six but plus three. It plus won't, we eight. won't push through the. Uh, can he? Proc no, I mean the mage block? has. The mage has a million damage. Ah, okay. I thought you meant blackout. I was like, I don't um, think it's enough to push through an ice block. block <laughs> double ice lance, which is loads, and fireball, which is some more, and that's plenty. He, um, yeah, he does have a hell of a lot of damage, and now seventeen something like that. This is how the, swingy this is here because. The low theb f normally feels good, and if that one card wasn't in Techno Goose's hand, then fine, Blackout effectively gains a turn, because there's nothing else to yeah. really play. But dropping Alex Straza at that moment, combined with the fact that Blackout hasn't drawn into any more of his heal, he might not be running the heal bot, so I'm not exactly sure exactly what variant of Rogue this is. We saw the Farseer earlier. Um, yeah, they used to but... play one of each if they play one, I think. It might be just double Farseer. Um... But he's already used a fast here, and it's going to go to two one to Techno Goose. Yeah, doing some quick, basic mathematics there results in a dead blackout. Um, so yeah, Techno Goose going up two one, pretty, pretty convincing. Um, that was like it, it was very swingy on onto that turn with the uh, with the Alex Strauser mm -hmm. there. That was pretty pretty ruthless to be honest. <laughs> yeah, blackout managed to get a really big board twice there, but um, just couldn't manipulate the situation because Freeze Mage just so much power in that position. Now he's playing against the Paladin though, this should be a really favoured matchup for his oh. own um, Freeze Mage. Yeah. And then if he did win it, it would be Rogue versus Paladin which is actually a decent matchup again, so even though he's 2-1 down, Blackout's probably still got a decent shot at this one. Yeah, and especially you know, you look at the formats overall, it, it's very similar with Conquest and uh, Last Hero standing, but being like 1-0, even potentially 2-0 down isn't always horrendous because, you you know, you, your lineup may do really well against that last deck. So, you know, you do have to win with each one of your decks, and Technogus might struggle. Secret Paladin not normally favoured versus Freeze Mage. I think the game has to go very, very right for the Paladin and very wrong for the Freeze Mage for this yeah, to be Paladin a major issue. Yeah, the go f f sort of completely and utterly all in and and hope mostly not not entirely but um if you can get Tyrion weapon sometimes that's a way of winning a later game yeah but in general your your chance of winning involves either um getting a doctor boom on your opponent's turn somehow to go off yeah i think or... we did see i think we did see earlier though that the um the secret paladin from techno goose actually has lothab in right i didn't imagine that he played lothab uh... in the game versus patron didn't he or am I thinking of a different... Am I thinking of the I'm game before? Of game earlier. That might have been the Vortex game. We'll find out, I'm Vortex, sure. It was Vortex. But... He had double redemption in his deck, didn't he? He was, he was the guy with it, his yeah. yeah, so, so we'll see, actually. He's only on the board here. He's, he's going pretty much all in. He's got that Tyrion. Um, but Blackout's hand looks pretty good. Um, he should be able to manipulate card draw here um, with removal. He hasn't got anything to remove these guys with yet, but he's got so much card draw that he should have soon. And obviously, Secret Paladin even susceptible to the ping, as yeah. that board suddenly, just by losing one ping's worth of damage, looks a lot less terrifying. Yeah, and uh, the, Thor uh, the Thorison, sorry, that's too much uh, Too much Emperor talking. The Thalno's coming down, he's actually purely for the cycle. Uh, Blackout's currently sitting on a lot of damage, he just needs to really move into the uh, the cards that actually push his opponent into that lethal range, like either Alex Straza or, um, or even just uh, like the Frostbolts, really, for the Ice Lances as well. Um, so this is his intellect turn, right? Does he... He just doesn't want to have to use these Frostbolts, but... Yeah, I don't think. I guess with two of them. I don't think he has to, right? Because no, he, ha he has no. ice block in hand as well. 
Interesting that he's still playing Pyroblast, by the way. What do you think of that? Uh, I'm not the uh, best Freeze Mage player in the world. Okay. But, so Pyroblast but... is um, obviously fine, but it's, it's interesting to me because it's been rotated out a lot recently in favour of other things. Yeah, I think it's useful for the... Uh... Like you said, because it's not super common, it's more of a surprise factor, right? And sometimes you can put your opponent down to, uh, say, like, 7, 8, 9 health. And even with some heals, you normally, you know, like, like the smaller heals, you normally just like, well, I'll just pyroblast you down so low. And then I have, like, fireball, fireball, frostball, ice lance, and it's just too much. Yep. And this, if he can, now, now Blackout, because he has everything else in hand, he literally just has to survive. Um, which is kind of what Freeze Mage is built to do anyway. If you can just... Yeah, this still sounds a problem as well for Techno Goose. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's it's similar. I mean, I don't think you can ever really leave Thorison up unless it, you either setting up lethal next turn and you're very safe. Um, or you've got no choice. But uh, especially in a deck like Freeze Mage, it's similar to decks like Druid as well, where it's especially dangerous to... Uh, to, to leave a Thorison up because Freeze Mage can do silly, silly things when the cards don't cost the normal amounts. Yeah, um, it may be that, you know, he, it isn't a decision he had to make there. He may have just had to make the decision that maybe I can get through this, but you know, really, that Freeze Mage with seven or eight cards in hand is just already in a dominant position. You can't give them the eight mana reduction. And this well, is all about just how Blackout chooses to not die here. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, he has Ice Block up, right? So. He's safe. He just shouldn't die next... Or shouldn't get the uh, block proc yeah. next turn. Then he plays Alex Straza. Then he has 6, 7, 8, 9... Uh, is that yeah. 17? Um, he's got a lot over I 2 think... turns anyway. Over the 1 turn he has 17. We just did that exactly. Yeah, and, and, then, and then Pyro as well. So, yeah. like, he, he's got so much damage. I just don't see how Blackout can actually lose now. Um, but he has to not die the turn... Like, the, this turn he won't... The next turn he won't die, but the turn after that he can. So he has to either... Kill Techno Goose or make sure he's not going to die at that point. Yeah, well, he just uh, Alex Strazers and then hits him for 17, right? Mm -hmm. So, as long as, I mean, as long as the, the secret paladin doesn't run some crazy, like, random holy light or something. Some random <laughs> holy light. In incoming holy light. <laughs> then, like, normally you should be okay because this is really nice. He's got the amount of damage that negates a true silver attack, um, which is really nice. So, the, the heal for two isn't even a threat. So, it's going to go to 2 2. Which is going to put up the Rogue versus the Paladin match. Uh, Rogue's definitely the favourite in that matchup, which presumably is why Blackout brought it. And he didn't bring Paladin at all in his lineup, so he may have anticipated other people bringing Rogue as well, even though they haven't that we've seen. Yeah. So this bro uh, this bot's just going to get procced, and then we know, you know, we we know what's going to happen next turn. It's probably not too much of a surprise, <laughs> as we said. So the the game will go on to the next match, and what will it? It'll be Blackout's uh, Rogue versus... Techno's Paladin. Yeah. That should be pretty so. good. That'll be really interesting, actually, because normally, um, like in, in the, the more older days, the Rogue does very well versus Paladin. Um, but Secret Paladin is a, uh, is a deck that can do anything, it seems. And just to point out, for, as we didn't introduce the game, as they went straight into it, um, this, the winner of this match does qualify for tomorrow. This is the winner's match in Group C. And the loser will have won a game, and they will play in the deciding match later, which I don't think we'll have. I think we'll have a match from a different group, so we'll have covered three different groups today. And, yeah, so the winner of this gets through to tomorrow. The loser will get another chance to get through to tomorrow. So this, this one match, this one game right now, somebody goes through to tomorrow's top eight. Yeah, is... and, and you know what as well? Having to just play one less best of is actually pretty big. It's, you know, less stress of the evening, more <laughs> rest, you know, there's a lot... And, and the confidence of saying, yeah, I just, I just too old my group, or, you know, whatever it was. So, you know, that's feeling... Got to be feeling pretty good. And if you, like you said, take this match, it does mean quite a lot. Yep, and... Blackout's hand's a little clunky with a double prep, but because he's got the sprint, that should be pretty easy to resolve, that problem. And, all, uh, and also the fact that... Looking Sorry, Disgusting. also the fact that if he draws into something like Fan of Knives with Prep and Violet Teacher, that can just end the game there and then. Um, it, it can be very ropey because he has the option, if Fan of Knives comes out, to for his opponent to play Mustang out, and if he top decks Fan of Knives, he can coin Violet Teacher Prep Fan, which is just... What do you do here? Do you Mustard take that chance, or do you just play Cockhammer, which looks really slow? 
Um, it's not a nice decision to have to make. I, I think it's very difficult to not muster on turn three because, again, yeah. it's one of those options where, like, if he has Fan of Knives, I get blown out. That is 100% correct. But if he doesn't have Fan of Knives, this is the right play. And it's only, and like, still... two of in the whole deck, right? So you can't really yeah. just play around that this early in the game. And you still have a game. free weapon that didn't cost you anything compared to their fan, which drew them a card yeah. that they might not be able to cast all game. Yeah. So so yeah. we did draw his second Eviscerate. Uh, it wasn't the uh, Fan of Knives that he probably would have loved, but still gets a pretty good board. The weapon was already equipped, so he takes out one of the 1-1s, one backstabs another, puts two minions of his own that easily challenge the two 1-1s one from Techno Goose. Yeah, and Techno Goose is going to struggle to have the board for turn 6, which is, as I keep saying, the thing that really matters in this matchup. You want that board on turn 6. And, yeah, he's doing everything he can to pick it off, but... Um, as it stands right now, Blackout's going to make a load more things on the next turn and probably have... Well, the Owl's seen five, that it five. won't. The Violet Teacher won't create any of the tokens. Oh, but, sorry, he, yeah. but the sprint is definitely going to be pretty nice. Whenever Rogue has cards, you are no afraid fan. constantly. No fan. Um, he does get another prep sprint, of course, if he wants it, but that's going to be a bit slow now. So his next turn... The flurry option is available, but I don't think he'll want to do that. Pillager. Showing my rogue skills here. <laughs> um, it's a tough one. I think it, a lot of Blackout's next turn depends on what he draws, because he has access to Vout Teacher Prep and then things. Mysterious so Challenger into Boom, into Divine Favor, if Blackout doesn't manage to empty this hand out, is going to be terrifying. Yeah. The thing here is as well, though, what's nice about the Violet Teacher is um, Techno Goose can't kill it, right? He can't kill it with what he's got on board, so he just has to sort of ignore it, and then this opens up Blackout to maybe do some crazy stuff and build a big board <laughs> himself, but that is Mysterious Challenger, and it's, how, how well is Blackout going to deal with this now? Yeah, this is just... He's playing so quickly at okay? yeah. Obviously, he's got this plan. Yeah, you, you know what's happening on turn six a lot of the time, so he'd have been thinking about this in the last turn as well. Yeah, the idea uh, here is he's going to attack in, proc all the secrets, he's going to Blade Flurry, and then he's probably going to prep this, which should, should clear the board more, you know, maybe leave a 1-1 one -one yeah. up. Um, oh, he attacks him first, so he clears now, yeah. So, he leaves the one, uh, he can clear the board here, and he creates a hell of a board himself, so... Yep. He's done as well uh, as he can do against Mysterious... This is as good as it's getting, right? If someone plays Mysterious Challenger, especially with a minion as well on the board, and you can clear the whole thing the following turn and still have a reasonable hand, you're feeling pretty good, right? Yeah, he's he's done well here. Um, Boom's going to be annoying, but nowhere near as devastating as it could have been had he not played that turn correctly. And that's actually a question now whether you want to just Shredder and Divine Favor. Yeah, it's a tough uh, one because boom, obviously, but being able to burn that many cards has actually helped him because Divine Favor is in Techno Goose's hand. Ooh, mm -hmm. so it never feels great to sap a Doctor Boom, but if you can get so much tempo that it doesn't matter yes. because you can just win next turn. You know, like potentially, uh, yeah. for all Techno Goose knows, if say as your Drake or Tomb Pillager sap comes down, probably Drake, then you're just thinking. He can just kill me next turn. This is scary. He's going for the clear, though. He's, I, I, I agree it's worth thinking about the sap for sure in these situations because you do. You just get rid of a 7-7. Seven, seven, they put down two bots, and sometimes you can just fill the board up enough that who cares. In this situation, though, with Techno Goose on 20 and Blackout on 11, he's decided that probably best not to give too much in the way of bots. And he keeps the sap for the final push. He, what do you do here, though? Sap something, I think. Yeah, I think sapping the shredder is the right play. You just want to get the power off the board, and, and you build up the, the turn for a potential lethal. Um, the only problem is you're you're so scared of Tyrion. Uh, ah, the, the, yeah. The the flip side of that though is like it was just turn eight. He doesn't have Tyrion because he would have played it. There's no right. world you wouldn't play Tyrion there. I don't think there's always playing around sap, but if he's going to continue to play around it, yeah, then. Uh, then you know that's that's also fine but what he's doing now is he's putting enough pressure on so that he can potentially go into a really threatened lethal next turn and techno goose drawing into a se uh, secret keeper is pretty pretty grim that's that's the problem that secret piling can have sometimes in the late game you draw into cards like creeper secret keeper that have such a low impact late game 
And look at this sticky board. Like, he's got a lot of options to He does have a double out, yeah. buffed fan of knives, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. Whoop. It's just a case of whether he can manipulate this so that when he does that, um, everything does die. Like, all three of these guys produce more guys. And that's always messy. Yeah. So it's... he's just going to continue his ordering here. He's also got to make sure he doesn't, like, die. That's kind of important in Hearthstone. Yeah, because we've not kids. actually seen any Blessing of Kings yet, have we? So there's always, you know, there's always a chance that if you leave a minion on the board and, like, a big Blessing of Kings comes out along with maybe a weapon, it can be a little bit scary. So Lothab was definitely a consideration there. He has gone for just the uh, the, the crazy big uh, fan of knives, though, which yeah, and he only leaves a 1-1, one so probably feeling okay about just the 1-1 one -one on the board. And he's he can heal, he can tinkers, he's going to have... He's going to have a coin, possibly. Well, he should have a coin. You'd think you'd bump off this 5-1 here. Uh, unless Techno Goose thinks he can... like He's counting his outs. Maybe there's a way he thinks he can top deck two things. Nope, he's just going to um, draw maximum cards. cards. Yeah, what can, so what four drops? There's, I imagine, a Keeper of Alderman, which doesn't do too much. Maybe a Keeper. Uh, a True Silver Champion. Yeah, there we silver, go. Maybe a there is. Yeah, so True Silver Champions, uh, probably what he wanted to see here. He can clear it pretty nicely. He does leave the 4-2 up, but, you know, there's not much he can do about that. He does heal for 2 as well, so he only takes 2 from the 4-4 uh, the as he got Drake here. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if he's got lethal. I don't think he has Blackout, that is. Because um, he, can, he can trigger the Tinkers with a coin. Oh, 8. That's 10. Oh, and Flurry. Is that lethal now with the Flurry? I think it is. Caster should never do maths. Yeah, he didn't. Before. I thought he was going to kill the Drake. That's kind I of. I think odd. he's good. He just, he's just, he's just a win. Now. Yeah, I thought the Drake was going to get killed as well. Yeah, I thought he was going to kill the four-four um, Drake. I actually just had to stop for a second and look, look as to why he uh, didn't kill the four-four Drake. And there we go, Rogue just dest destroying there pretty hard. There were some big turns, but Blackout does take it three-two. Really close set actually. His lineup's really good there. It panned out that he had a yeah, really, really close set. Um, he ended up with Patron against Paladin. He ended up with Rogue against Paladin. And he ended up with Freeze Mage against Paladin. And the fact he hasn't brought Paladin himself to me suggests that he's gone with the anti-Paladin thing, obviously, that I've just read out. And also, um, you know, he thinks that Paladin's going to be a big part of this tournament. Interesting that Druid got banned, which is the one deck that probably is okay for the Paladin. Yeah, I think the issue there is, and because of the whole lineup in general, although the Druid's okay for Paladin, you can never really count Druid out, as we said earlier, but also mm -hmm. it's very good versus some other decks. As we know, Techno Goose did play Freeze Mage, so then Druid would have been quite scary. Um, I think this is definitely an approach that a lot of players are taking to tournaments. Um, and we see it most in terms of what Blackout have done, where I say, I'm just not going to lose to Paladin. Like, that's just the way I'm going to play. And then on another hand, I think a lot of people are looking at the same tactic against Druids as well, because they seem to be yes. the most common at the moment. The Paladin and the Druid picks are almost the staple of the, the three to four decks. Um, every yeah. single series. And in Conquest, if everyone's getting comfortable with a deck, what you can do is pick on that deck. And uh, that is one of the things that, you know, in Conquest you can do. In Last Hero Standing, obviously, it's all the opposite and you have to think backwards. Um, but in Conquest, it's if you think they're going to bring Paladin, don't lose to it and you'll find a way through. Yep. And that's what Blackout's done here. So And it's working. Uh, so Blackout is now through um, to day two, uh -huh. uh, if, if I'm correct. And Techno Goose has yeah, he, a... He is. Techno Goose has a game to uh, to play. I'm not sure who's versus yet, but we can... Um... He will play either that guy or Wampy in the next thing. Let me just see if there's a result. There is a result. It's his Wampy he'll be playing in the next... Okay. In the in the deciding match, if Technogus will be Wampy, and the winner of that will go through to tomorrow, uh, that guy unfortunately eliminated. And just see if we get a couple more results while we're still on air. Sure. Um, Synthetic is through. He has beaten Vortex in their group finals, so Vortex will have to play, possibly a rematch match with Maynard, or he'll have to play Powder. And that's the only other result we have right now. So. Okay, so we're going to take a break. Um, I'm pretty sure... Let me have a quick check to the old schedule. I'm pretty sure we should be casting uh, Orange's match next. If he has a match, we'll have to see. Um, so uh, we should be Orange. If it's not, we'll find another match, so we'll be fine. Um, and we're just going to go on a break now. And when we come back, we might have a few more results for you to let you know. And uh, we should have the final match of the evening. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and uh, stick around for the rest of the games.